What is vinyl tag? I want to tell you all about it coming up. Let's go. Ah. This thing called vinyl tag, which is usually organized by one person. Of late, it's been the esteemed, the one, the only, the tag master general, Rob Walker, has organized at least the last couple of years, at least since I've been doing it. So I want to thank Rob for again picking up the, the mantle and getting us off the ground. But vinyl tag is essentially a list of preordained questions that people can show records and speak to their collection and and just kind of put the, you know themselves out there for the community. I know there's some new people every year. There's new people who decide to step on, step over to the other side of the camera, like I did a couple years ago, participate in the vinyl community. And usually a good launching pad for that is vinyl tag. So now enough jibber jabber. Let's go. It's exciting. My favorite record I purchased in 2023. It's not my most expensive record. It's not the one I've been looking for the longest, but I've talked about it in a couple videos already. But at the Austin Record Fair, I picked up this OG ma -ma 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 mono. Wow. Of Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Such a slammer. This is, I think, 1950. I mean, this is very old. I wish I had the year right in front of me. I don't because I suck. But um, told the story, but long story short, I paid less than like $20 for this. And this thing goes for hundreds of dollars. Uh, original Blue Note Records, not very easy to find anymore. And finding something like this, particularly now as a lot of folks are getting into jazz or have gotten into jazz the last couple of years, more records, you know, record renaissance, all that kind of stuff. But finding this stuff in the wild, not easy to do. So this was my favorite record because I got it super cheap, great story, a lot of fun, found it in the wild, which is organically my favorite thing to do is find records out at the shows, out at the shops, yard sales, wherever I'm going, thrift stops, etc. But anyway, favorite record I picked up in 2023. The last record, this is number two, the last record I purchased in 2023. So I got, this is the Foo Fighters self-titled debut album. I think it's came out in 95. I had the CD when it came out because I was a big Nirvana fan in the early 90s. This is obviously Dave Grohl's uh, band they didn't launch coming out of Nirvana. Quick story on this one is I was kind of done buying records for the year of, outside of things I had ordered online already and were in transit. But Half Price Books, I don't know if you're familiar with that retailer chain, they're based, uh, founded in Dallas or prominently based in like the Southwest. It's a book resale shop, but they also sell records, something I didn't find out until maybe the last four or five years. And they're having a promotion right after Christmas, 20% off the whole store. So I didn't go right away, but we were out running errands one day, and I said, you know what the hey, let's just go and duck in. And I'm so glad I did, because this normally goes for north of $100. I got it for less than that. And it's an OG, which I like the OGs. You should like the OGs too, not the OJs. I mean, you can like the OJs, but OGs is where it's at. So this was the last record I purchased in 2023. Third question is a band or singer who released two or more albums in the same calendar year. In 2022, I think I might even use this in last year's tag. I'd have to go back and watch the tape. But the Red Hot Chili Peppers released two albums, Unlimited Love in the Spring and in the Fall Return of the Dream Canteen. Unfortunately, guys, and gals and buddies had those packed away. It's hard to believe those have not been records that I've been eager to just pull right out and listen to after we moved. But trust me, there were so many different variants, particularly of Unlimited Love. It was, it was kind of a running joke how many different color variants, cover variants. Return of the Dream Canteen had a couple, but nothing the scope to match Unlimited Love. I mean, there's a Lakers color variant. There, Return of the Dream Canteen did have a LA Rams color variant, but you know, fuck Stan Kroenke. Fuck you and your eyebrows. Sorry, St. Louis. St. Louis coming out of my face, but fuck that guy. First, take a big step back and literally fuck your own face. If you could listen to music from any decade, and only listen to that decade of music for whatever reason, maybe you're in some kind of Star Trek episode. Uh, maybe you've been sent in part of the matrix. I don't know. You gotta, have fun. You, gotta, you gotta take creative liberties with these questions. 
What decade would that be? It'd have to be the 90s. Uh, number five, show a record by a band or musician from Manchester. Now, I know what Rob was going for here. He means Manchester, the UK. Did not mean Manchester, Missouri, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump from me. Now, there are several bands and musicians. Again, this is where I suck in this. you got Oasis. You've got, I think, The Verve. Uh, you've got The Smiths. Uh, Arnaldo, Fidelio, underscore Frequency, sent me a Johnny Marr record a couple months ago. Of course, those are all packed away, so I absolutely suck, but I can't show for this demonstration, but I do have some of those records. Really, dude? Really? Sace. Which band or singer did you listen to most in 2023? If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, particularly in the front half of the year, as part of the Vinyl Community Podcast Project, I was fortunate enough to interview Nick Perry, who is a musician I've been following for a long time. I've got several videos about that on the channel, but long story short, he did a independent release, produced, financed, everything. Everything involved, start to finish, brass tacks, everything. Nick was the guy, the, soul, the motivating factor, the soul. And obviously the, the musicians were behind it. Enough jibber jabber. I'm talking about Terra Firma. This is the album from Nick Perry and the Underground Thieves. Uh, it's a concept album and it has a lot of great themes. And, and again, I've talked about it several times on the channel. I don't know why more people are not following my lead on this one because I would not I would not recommend anything that's straight trash. You know, tastes are relative. I get that. But I think that everybody should at least sample this. It's on streamers. The physical media has sold out from the shop. Uh, I was fortunate enough to buy a couple copies on vinyl, which I've given out to some friends in the vinyl community. I know David Bianco called this his album of the year. It's definitely my albums of the year. I, it's hard for me to be an absolutist like that. But uh, anyway, amazing 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 album if you like pink floyd if you like neil young if you like just a really sick guitar licks um but it, it's much more than that highly recommend you check out nick perry the underground thieves terra firma yeah all right buddies we're at number seven so show me seven seven inch records from seven inch 45s um i've got several here so i just kind of picked to the cream of the crop the cream of the crop um, one is one of my favorite movies of the 80s, kids' movies, Never Ending Story. This is a theme to The Never Ending Story, self titled uh, The Never Ending Story, performed by Lamal. I don't think this guy ever, or this, or this uh, band ever did anything else. But what's really interesting is if you're familiar with like synth music, uh, like some of the Scarface soundtrack, late 70s, uh, Donna Summer did a lot of albums produced by Giorgio Moroder. I mean, if you want to really expand your your vocabulary and your musical tastes, like go down a deep dive and pick up Giorgio Moroder stuff. Cause dude, synth daddy, the guy should have been called synth daddy. Cause dude had some sick synth output. So anyway, so he produced this, that's no surprise. Uh, I'm going to show Cindy Lauper, Shebop. This, uh, I don't know if this was on the Goonie soundtrack. I remember I first heard this for the first time. However, uh, the song has a hidden meaning and I'm not going to uh, spoil it for you. Google it. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> Something I didn't learn until my adulthood, but uh, Cindy Lauper Sheba. Uh, next one, I got Michael Jackson and uh, Paul McCartney. So this was uh, around the time that they were doing Thriller, or Michael Jackson was, and, and Paul McCartney came in, and they were buddies. And, and unfortunately, Paul spilled the tea about uh, how to, to really expand your wealth and talked about uh, owning catalog and licensing of musicians and bands and their songs and their catalogs. And uh, Michael... Michael apparently had his notepad that day because uh, I can tell you these dudes uh, quit holding hands a little bit after this because when the Beatles catalog came up for auction and Paul McCartney was determined to own all the masters and the, and the songwriting and publishing and all that stuff and the licensing, et cetera, um, surprise was on him because uh, he was outbid by somebody and that somebody was uh, Michael Jackson, who was very happy that day because he turned uh, owning the Beatles catalog into a lot of money. So. Um, anyway, these dudes are definitely not holding hands <laughs> after that. Say, say, say. Um, I'd have to show a Stevie Nicks seven inch. These are always fun, especially the covers. This is Edge of Seventeen, so this is a really uh, fun song. You know, just like the White Winged Dove sings a song. I'm not gonna sing it for you, but that's fun. Uh, I mentioned just a second ago uh, George Michael. This is Faith. This is a fun one. If you don't have this one. Uh, it's pretty good. The B-side is Hand to Mouth, which I'm not familiar with that one. Um, Tony Basil, Mickey. I mean, this is like 
1982, I want to say. Oh, I got to look this one up because I think it was 82. Yep, 82, 81, 82. And then the last one I had, I had another George Michael and Monkey. I mean, come on. Yo, what's up? Uh, bonus, she drives me crazy. Fine young cannibals. Cannibals, say that with a mouthful after lunch. There's my seven inches. It's coming to your party. Choose four music-related people to come to a imaginary dinner party. Past or present, who would you invite? I'm glad he specified, Rob specified, that this is music people. Because obviously I think we'd all personally have touches of like relatives or you know, maybe you want to talk to Jesus or um, I don't know. Anyway, music people only. Uh, so the first two people, actually I think three of the four people on my list are deceased. Uh, the only living person is Eric Clapton just because he's my probably favorite, favorite living guitar player. But with him, I would like to resurrect for this one time only dinner party, uh, George Harrison, because George Harrison is my favorite Beatle. I'm not a John Lennon guy, not a Paul McCartney guy. George is my favorite Beatle for a lot of reasons. But I'd like to have those two in the same room, and I'd love to just understand the, the, the relationship that they had over Patty Boyd Harrison, uh, because it's one of the most fascinating rock and roll stories to me that there is. Um, the other two I'd love, Kurt Cobain, because I'd really like to kind of understand him and, and kind of pick his brain on where his head was at prior to his demise. And then I showed it earlier uh, on that one uh, single, uh, Michael Jackson. I mean, when I was a kid, Michael Jackson, outside of Hulk Hogan, Michael Jackson was like the biggest person in, in pop culture for me. And so um, I think it'd be fascinating. And I'm talking about like Jerry Curl, Michael Jackson. I'm not talking to like black and white, uh, the, the skin situation, the, the smooth hair. I'm not talking about later in life Michael Jackson. I'm talking like vintage Michael Jackson in his apex of like the 80s where um, he was one of the baddest dudes on the planet. Like him, Prince, etc. Anyway, that's my dinner party guests. We lost them. She was one musician who passed away in 2023. Uh, I think it says pasted, Rob. It says pasted on your questions. So I don't know who pasted away, but I can tell you passed away. And that is one of many. We have Tony Bennett. There's several people that did. Uh, I'm showing a record by Wayne Shorter. This is a Tone Poet reissue. This is Schizophrenia. Again, I'm, I'm not the biggest jazz head, and I'm not trying to be. So I will buy some things on recommendation of a select few. I used to be a fool and just watch vinyl community videos and just buy everything that anyone said was any good. Eventually, you figure out who's, who's selling you a sack of shit and who... <laughs> <laughs> who is somebody's opinion or taste that may be more aligned yours anyway uh this one was recommended to me and it's a banger this is a great jazz album especially um i mean the cover's cool as hell but um the way it, it just the vibe you know that the jazz album has to have a, like a really cool vibe to hook me and you know when you get into kind of like some free jazz and and, and you get into some of this fusion shit it can really lose me but another thing also quick primer if you're kind of getting into jazz records Always look on who played on these things. And if you see a lot of familiar names, that's a good thing. So on this one, you've got Herbie Hancock. you got the immortal Ron Carter. you got Joe Chambers. So names you can trust. As long as there's names you can trust on the album, I think you're in good shape. Number 10, imagine you could only listen to music for one country. Which country would you choose? I would not choose Manchester and the United Kingdom, Rob. I'm here to tell you. I would choose the good old U.S. of A. Uh, name three vinyl community channels you discovered in 2023. So discovered, I'm going to take a little creative license with that. I knew of a couple of these guys, but in 2023, either I found a channel or they started a channel. Uh, first, I'm going to start with one of my biggest uh, supporters, champions, uh, just positive guy. I, I don't think I've ever heard him say anything negative, and that's Jason Arsenal. He started his channel. I'm going to have links to these channels below in, in, in the show notes, so please check those out. But Jason Arsenal, great guy. Uh, he only started collecting records here in the last couple of years, but he's very enthusiastic about it. And uh, he, he's very humble about how he goes about it. And obviously the fact that uh, he's very positive really kind of rubs off on me because sometimes it's easy, especially when you're doing this kind of videos, you get a negative comment or get somebody kind of uh, doesn't like the jib of your jab. Jason is beyond positive and, and it's folks like Jason you order one gravitate towards because they make the hobby and they make doing this vinyl community stuff pretty fun. Next one I'm going to talk about is Elliot Cruz, the teach, uh, you know, a very level-headed guy. Uh, <laughs> doesn't take any of this too seriously, which I can really appreciate because sometimes, you know, uh, especially as you're getting to know different people in the community and, and especially as some of these uh, very opinionated folks come at you, 
uh, you know, it's easy to kind of lose sight and kind of get in the combative mode. But Elliot's always a very level-headed guy, and I like <laughs> when I've engaged with him on live stream or what have you. I mean, again, he doesn't take it too seriously, and it's always fun to hear his perspective on how he collects records, he sells records at shows, etc. And then the last one is a guy who I discovered in the past year, but he hadn't been making videos really consistently. He made a video recently, and I, I told him about it. I wish he would do more of it, and that's Andrew Lavelle. He collects, I mean, great eye and a great, uh, I guess, response to, to collecting records. What I mean by that is he shows a lot of records in the community when he does make videos that not a lot of other people show. That's always really cool to me. And two, it's things that I would want to collect. Like he just showed a video, I watched it here recently, where he was showing Aerosmith get a grip, first pressing, because he said he got the reissue and it sucked. So got the first pressing, uh, Black Crow's record, a lot, a lot of things. And again, it's not like we're music elitists, like not even close. But it's always cool when you can find somebody who makes you go, wow, I had no idea. When you can learn and be taught indirectly through watching these videos, I think that's a very powerful thing. And so A is based in Chicago, so I'm hoping to meet up with him maybe in the next year when I make my grand return to the Hillside Record Show here in a couple of weeks. Anyway, those are three channels that I think you should definitely check out. And number 12 says, show a record you had as a teenager. This is going to be another fat <laughs> As a teenager, I think I said it earlier, it's in the CDs. And now it's in the CD, boom. 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 So I didn't have any bottom line. Show a funk or soul record. I've talked about this on the channel before. It's an easy one to grab. Uh, I have multiple copies of this because anytime I see it, I pick it up. It's kind of like my Huey Lewis and the News Sports. Spoiler alert. Um, this is Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver's. And I've talked about this before. This one's in Shrink. This is on the Gordy label. So this is like a spinoff label from Motown. Um, if you don't know, you will know. If, I want you to take a close look at these dapper gentleman on the cover and i'm going to tell you that one of these gentlemen uh, became famous for something other than music wow man i'm not going to spoil for you i want you to do some homework but um let's just say in this photo my man's looking very square and how you may recognize him but anyway here's my jazz or soul record bobby taylor and the vancouver's so number 14 is a fun one it says show a record you think everyone has then show a record you think nobody has okay Challenge accepted. So this one, uh, and you're going to laugh at me because it's not open. I, I give this one out as a gift periodically. This is Nirvana. Never mind. Uh, this is the Palace Pressing. So this is like, I think, Bernie, Mas Bernie Grundman mastered this one. So I bought a whole bunch when they were available because, one, I was selling some. I'm going to be honest. I was flipping a few. But I also like to give these out because outside of an OG, maybe even the MoFi, which I don't have, but I'd like to be optimistic this year. I'd like to think that sounds pretty good. This is the one to get. So I think everyone, I don't know if they, everyone has the palace pressing, but I think that hopefully everyone has this album. It's like one of the Mount Rushmore of grunge albums from the 90s. And then this one, I'm going to, this is the Pepsi Challenge moment, buddies, because I didn't even know this record existed. This is the soundtrack to the motion picture that came out last year, Air. It was produced by Amazon Studios. It's a story of Nike signed Michael Jordan and built the Jordan brand. Uh, ben Affleck plays Phil Knight, questionable, but he directed it, so I guess you know that's kind of how that happened. Um, Matt Damon plays Sonny Vaccaro. Um, interesting story. They did take some creative license with a, a, a few facts, <laughs> how that all came to be, but um, as somebody who used to work for Nike Corporate, uh, I can appreciate this, and I appreciate the story, and, and, and it's, you know, a lot of callbacks to my time up in Beaverton when I'd be up there. Um, anyway, I didn't even know they had the soundtrack, but, you know, they've got like Sister Christian on here, uh, a lot of uh, interesting 80s specific songs. So I think whoever curated the soundtrack did a nice job. I didn't know they put this on vinyl. This is one of those records that they probably didn't need to put on vinyl, but they did anyway. So I dare you, I double dog dare you. If you've got this, tell me in the comments below, because I'm probably one of like seven people who really felt motivated to buy this. Number 15, She's Great, a record by a female artist she bought in 2023. So I already had this record from Records Today years ago, and it's a little pricey. I'm sure the price is going to come down because this is the latest reissue of Cheryl Crow from Kennett, Missouri. Uh, this is her probably her biggest selling commercial album, probably her best album, uh, Tuesday Night Music Club. Uh, Bernie, again, Grumman, you heard that name before, uh, remastered this from the analog tapes. See, I'm one of those suckers who, if I can save the hype sticker, I do when I do my uh, re-sleeving and so forth. But anyway, this is a gem. And if you if you watch Amazon close enough, 
Uh, you can pick this up for less than 20 bucks. Highly recommend you do so because this is a winner. Favorite video you posted on your channel in 2023 and the favorite video you watched in the VC in 2023. So I talked about the album earlier from Nick Perry and the Underground Thieves, Terra Firma. I'd have to say my favorite video that I put out was I, I did an interview and and I say it's my favorite video for a couple of reasons. Didn't get all the views and the clicks and the comments and stuff. And, you know, didn't expect it to be. But it was kind of the first time, you know, obviously, if you follow my channel, you know, about Bottle Community Podcast Project, my involvement, founding that, and all that kind of stuff. But when Nick agreed to do the interview, it was important for a couple of reasons. One, uh, somebody who I admired as a musician for years and, uh, you know, I was really excited to talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, particularly about this project. And he also gave me the album in advance uh, digitally to listen to. So it was really cool to, to, you know, like be part of that process. But more so, too, it, it kind of, it was the first kind of non, air quotes, vinyl community person that I didn't know in person that agreed to do an interview for the podcast. So I really had to kind of like learn how to be a little professional <laughs> in the interview way um so anyway for those reasons uh, that was my most important video or my favorite video listen and listen good i'm talking to you the second part of that question was my favorite video i watched of the vc so i'm gonna uh, give a shout out to some friends of mine and that's a channel called vinyl reckoning based in north carolina formerly of austin texas that's a matt stacy uh, an engaged couple who i think may be getting married this year um to simp to narrow it down to a video they they went to noble records which i know was a big deal for them met dylan who i've met before went to a shop don't worry about me this isn't about me but i know that that was a big deal for them and i know that uh, they have a, a nice back and forth on a, a social media which is great so that was probably my favorite video because i knew how important that was for them and and how like cool it was to meet dylan and and go to his shop and all that kind of stuff but I'm going to kind of pimp them out here for a little bit. They're very close to a thousand subs. So if you want to do anything, if you want to downvote this video, you want to tell me in the comments how much I suck, I can take it. But do one thing for me. Sub these guys up. All right, number 17, we're almost done, buddies. Show me a record you describe as a 90s classic. So another shout out to Felipe, my man from the Jazz Bums. Uh, he sent me a note, one of his local shops. Uh, he knows I'm collecting 90s OGs, and one of his local shops got this one. This is No Doubts, 1996, 95. Uh, classic album, Tragic Kingdom. Everybody should have this album in their collection. It's always fun to get these albums. One, this is in Shrink, too. It's got the nice hype sticker. It's an OG. But these albums that, let's say, define an artist, like the Sheryl Crow albums, like this, too. Probably their biggest commercial album, but there's not a bad song on there, in my opinion. And even the songs you, that weren't on radio, per se, or weren't released as singles are really good songs. And this is an album that has a lot of story behind it. If you know about the dynamics between Gwen Stefani and bassist Tony Canal, Can uh, their relationship falling apart while they're recording this and in their band together, and yada, yada. So a lot of interpersonal story to this, too. But the music is really good, and it obviously launched these guys from being just kind of a Southern California ska band into being a global and for everyone to enjoy. Anyway, this is a 90s classic if I ever saw one. Number 18, if I could walk into the cover, look through my collection, and choose a record cover you'd like to be part of. So this is where that spoiler comes in because it's hard for me to find a record better ever. And you listen to the new Sports 1983, one of the greatest albums probably of all time. You like Huey Lewis on the news? Almost done, buddies. It's like a greatest hits show a record you're so familiar with that feels like a greatest hits. Um, this one's not too hard. Boom, boom, boom. Talked about him earlier. Michael Jackson, Thriller, 1982. Um, I mean, this is one of the top three or four albums of all time, not just in unit sales, but I mean, just quality start to finish. Uh, obviously, you know, it's always interesting because the, a fair argument is what was the better Michael Jackson record? Was it Thriller? Or was it off the wall? That's a fair argument you can have in a bar or at a dinner party, and there's no losers in, the, in that conversation. But this one is, again, another album that every single song on here is amazing. And you have Quincy Jones producing it. Like, everything is fantastic. There's actually a really awesome documentary about the making of Thriller. I think it's on Showtime. If you don't have Showtime, it's on Paramount Plus, if I'm not mistaken. Highly recommend checking it out because I think it was behind the scenes and how they made it. 
It's how they, how they make the donuts. Like I really get off on that kind of stuff, learning and, and having a little more context to the songs I enjoy and the stories behind making them. So this is, I mean, if this isn't the greatest hits, I know Michael had a lot of other hits from Off the Wall, from Bad, from Dangerous, et cetera. But I think you'd be hard pressed to say that any of those, with the exception of maybe Bad, the exception of uh, uh, Rock With You, maybe, they're all on this album. So check it out. Plus, side note, if you're a record collector, you probably already know this, but the one you want to have is the one, if you look over here, holding my fingers pointing it out, first pressing is the best one. Bernie Brownman, again, mentioned him several times on this video, uh, mastered this, but you want the one, the first pressing, it says produced by Quincy Jones for Quincy Jones Productions. Uh, Follow-up reissues have Michael Jackson with a co-producing credit and says produced by Quincy Jones and Michael Jackson. No, no, you want the one that only has Quincy Jones on it. Trust me on that because that is the best sounding version of it. Last one, show me an album that was released in 1974. Boom, boom. Tim Buckley, uh, he's not everybody's cup of tea, but this is his album, Look at the Fool. Promo, promo copy. It's not a white label promo, but it's promotional copy nonetheless. This was released in 1974. My assumption is because that would be the 50th anniversary, I guess the 50th anniversary of this album. Um, not a bad album. It's not my favorite Tim Buckley album, but it fits the bill for this. Vinyl Tag, I appreciate uh, Vinyl Tag. I'm gonna, I've been digging into Vinyl Tag videos already. Again, shout out to the immortal Highlander, Tagmaster General, Rob Walker for organizing the tag this year. Appreciate you, buddy. You can eat your own hair. Buddies, when you get the chance to watch other Vinyl Tag videos, I highly encourage you to do so. But more importantly, when you get the chance to listen to your records, one of my vinyl resolutions this year is listen to your records more. But when you get the chance, just spin it. See you soon. Well, 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 how the turntables. Well, we out of time.